she gave Kneeling by her bedside I can still hear mama say The people are depending on you, Shirley Don't you let them down In a happy way Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house. God bless you. And I pray today that this word will encourage you and lift you up as you are being celebrated and honored for the work and the time and the effort and everything that you put into raising children. Embedded into every culture of our society are tremendous and phenomenal women who have raised phenomenal men and women themselves. Embedded even in the very culture of the word are women who have triumphed over difficult circumstances, who have braved and with much courage faced the king or faced a giant or faced a bully or faced an army. We have so many examples today in scripture about heroic women in the Bible who exemplified, hallelujah, the strength of a woman as she labored in prayer and the word. Praying mothers, hallelujah, are worth more than a dime or dozen. You cannot underestimate the power of a praying mother. Praying mothers or oh, uh, pray prayers over their children's future, over their children's purpose, over their children's destiny. And when praying mothers begin to pray and war in the realm of the spirit over their children, a change is sure to come. They will change this world and turn it upside down. It all started for us in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16 when God made a declaration that the seed of the woman would bruise the serpent's head, the head of the serpent. The woman will have to endure labor pains as a consequence of her disobedience. And ever since that time, Eve lived with an expectation that one day the seed of the woman would pave her way back into the Garden of Eden from which she had been evicted. The serpent had beguiled her, deceived her into disobeying God's command. And when a woman finds out that she has been deceived, trust me, she doesn't take it lightly. It is not something that she just sits back and say, okay, it happened. What am I going to do about this? Or what can I do about this? No, when a woman has been deceived, she wants to take an initiative plan of action to counterattack the person that has done her wrong. I'm thankful today that our fight against the enemy is not a flesh and blood fight, that we don't have to go fighting against our brothers and sisters who's tried to steal our crown or reign on our parade. But the Bible gives us, hallelujah, the weapons of warfare in which we must fight. And the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians that we are to, having done all to stand, we are to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in an evil day. So when a woman when has been deceived, when a woman has been beguiled, when a woman has been mistreated, abused, misused, lied upon, persecuted, especially where it concerns her children. Trust me, she's going to go from a beauty queen to a woman that's heading for war. She's going to go in the form of a woman that is on the battlefield, ready to stand in the front lines, hallelujah, and war on behalf of her children. And every mother today that is a praying mother is a warrior mother that will go at all odds and go to whatever length. Hallelujah. Even if it's an all-nighter, they will pull an all-nighter if they have to stand in the gap and pray their children through some very, very very difficult situations. Glory be to God. And so the seed of the woman was promised that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. Glory be to God. For the serpent had beguiled and deceived Eve into disobeying God's command. Hallelujah. First Timothy 2 and verse 14 tells us, 
that Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Now, because of that, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But praise God today, there is a way, Maraboshe, back into the garden. There is a way, hallelujah, back into fellowship with God. And the seed of the woman came through the womb of the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. The seed of the woman, which was uh, conceived in her womb by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost planted that seed in the womb of Mary, and she gave birth to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, was the seed that would bruise the serpent's head. But can you imagine from the time the serpent heard those words, he was looking to take out any seed that would come through the womb of the woman. And he tried it even with Eve because he, it ended up that Cain killed his brother Abel. They were the seeds of Eve. But God restored, hallelujah, the life of, uh, 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 that was lost in the, in the form of, of Seth being born to Adam and Eve after they lost Abel. So God, so the enemy is after your seed. He's after your child. You see your child acting up. You see your, your, your children straying along the pathway, hanging out with friends, talking back, being rude, being disrespectful, doing all manner of evil that you never taught them. The devil is after your seed because who knows which seed is going to bring a, a change in your family, in your generation. Hallelujah. Who knows which seed is going to be the seed that helps the family to turn around. Hallelujah. And to turn curses into blessings and breakthrough. You don't know. Hallelujah. That child uh, that looked like it has no hope. That child looked like can't be reformed, can't be redeemed. Hallelujah. But keep on praying. Hallelujah. Over your children and over other people's children. Glory be to God. Because even though Adam, hallelujah, was not deceived. And the Bible says the woman was deceived. The seed of the woman was going to find a way to help them back into the garden. Her seed and all who come through her, all who come through her, the mother of all living, would bring redemption, vindication, and restoration. And that is what Jesus did. When Jesus came, he brought redemption. He brought restoration. He brought reconciliation. Oh, glory be to God. Yet the seed would come through pain and suffering. And a woman, hallelujah, was going to have to bear the pain of childbearing. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God that she was built to conceive and give birth and to endure the pain until she gives birth. The Bible tells us, hallelujah, that once that child is born, that the woman, uh, the, the pain is gone and there is joy, hallelujah, at the point of seeing the face of that that seed coming into fruition. It is the same thing in the realm of the supernatural. When we go to prayer, hallelujah, we are praying about our seed, uh, giving birth to their purpose, their future, their destiny. Glory be to God. As uh, Isaiah 66 uh, verse 7 to 8 tells us that as soon as Zion travails, uh, she brought forth her children. Hallelujah. The Zion represented here in Isaiah is the church. Uh, but when we look at the church, uh, and the demographic of the church, we will notice uh, that more than 55, uh, more than uh, the church is comprised of more than, hallelujah, 70% are women or 80% are women. And so we know the value, hallelujah, down through the ages of having mothers who prayed the church through, Maraboshe, who prayed us through, glory be to God, until we were fulfilling divine purpose and destiny. And when I look back, hallelujah, at the women in scripture who were prayer warriors, who stood in the gap, hallelujah, for this generation, hallelujah, glory be to God. And not just for this generation, but for the generation, hallelujah, in which they live. Hallelujah. We look at people like, uh, 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 as I said before, like Esther. Esther was a queen chosen by divine 
providence uh, hallelujah to be the queen to king uh king exorcis uh, and she came into the kingdom for such a time as this uh, because at the height of the threat uh, that the jews were going to be annihilated esther Korababasai, with her entire uh garments on she was dressed queen she had on her print her, her her queenly attire she was dressed in with her her queen garments she had on her queen jewelry she had her, her attendance to her i mean she was decked out she was living in 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 a comfort and ease not even fully aware of what was going on in the kingdom of of persia but once she got known what was going on into the kingdom of persia from her uncle Mordecai she said to Mordecai the king hasn't called me for over uh, a month now but I'm going to go into the king but before I go into the king I'm going to fast me and my handmaidens and I want you to tell all the other uh, 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 Jews to fast with me hallelujah in that moment glory be to God Queen Esther hallelujah changed her garment uh, hallelujah on the outside she was dressed as a queen but on the inside she maintained hallelujah and stirred up a spirit of a warrior she stirred up the spirit of a warrior as she went into prayer and fasted yes i know sometimes we come out in our heels hallelujah come on we can deck it out put on our makeup come on put on nice jewelry dressed up and look nice come out at a wedding banquet a function come on come on ain't nobody looking so put together well dressed with all the accessories we got our little pocketbook come on we're walking around and we're taking pictures and we look great we're feeling great but once you begin to threaten a mother and her seed even in the animal kingdom you threaten a lion cub and listen, it won't take long before the lion, the mother lion is after you. Come on. You threaten the cub of a, of, of, of a tiger. It won't be long until they come looking for you. And they'll destroy you before they even rescue their child. Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And so when Esther went before God, hallelujah, and she decided that she was going to have to change being cute. Come on. She began to put on. Come on. She was getting ready for war. She began to to put on the face of a warrior on the outside she had on her makeup on the outside she was dressed as a queen hallelujah but on the inside she was going for war she was not gonna let anything or anyone stand in her way hallelujah the same could go for esther uh, not just for esther but for hannah hallelujah hannah went to the temple dressed and decked out uh, with she'd been going for years with her husband but penina was always berating her making her feel small bullying her oh na 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 you can't get pregnant i have all the kids so i'm special and she went before god the bible says in the bitterness of her soul and as she went before god uh, all that fancy clothes that she put on to go to the temple uh-uh it all changed in a heartbeat uh, because the bible tells us uh, hallelujah that she prayed hallelujah her lips were moving but you couldn't hear anything. Why? Because Hannah decided this was time for war. Hallelujah. And I want to speak to all the women out there. Hallelujah. In the, in the, in the sanctuary. All the women out there. Hallelujah. That is listening to the sound of my voice. There's a time to look cute. But you know that when it's time for war. When it's time for intercessory prayer. When it's time to call down fire from heaven. We ain't playing. We may look all put together on the outside. But on the inside we maintain the spirit of a warrior i'm calling you mother to rise up you must go before the king hallelujah and if you perish you're gonna perish but you must go before the king hallelujah you must hold on to your naomi and say to your naomi ha ah, forbid me not from leaving you hallelujah wherever you go i will go your god will be my god your people my people wherever you die that's where you i'm going to be buried hallelujah and she followed after naomi because she recognized that naomi's god hallelujah was greater than all the gods of moab hallelujah i want to encourage you today be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand in the evil day and keep on warring 
and fight it in the realm of the spirit over your child. Oh, glory be to God. It is the greatest weapon that you have right now as a woman of prayer. And we won't forget even those women who are raising kids alone, whether you're a single mother, hallelujah, by incident, <laughs> not accident, but incident, or whether you've lost your husband and you are a widow and you have been caring and trying to carry on and pick up the pieces. Uh, hallelujah. I want you to remember that as a widow, God is a defender and a protector of widows. And the Bible tells us, do not take advantage of the widow or the orphan. If you afflict them in any way and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry and my Anger will burn and I will kill you with the sword. Don't mess with those widows. Don't mess with them. The church has a responsibility to minister to the widows and to the orphans because God takes a hallelujah, a greater hallelujah interest in protecting and defending hallelujah. The widows look at what Psalm 68 5 says. It says that a father to the, he's a father to the fatherless and he is a defender of the widows. The Lord preserves the sojourners and he lifts up the fatherless and the widows. Psalm 146 and verse 9. Glory be to God. Isaiah 117 says, learn to do good. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. So even the widows who are raising children after losing a spouse, the security blanket has been pulled from under their feet. Hallelujah. And they feel lost and lonely. Hallelujah. And without hope. I want you to know this morning. Hallelujah. I want you to know today that there is hope. Hope is not lost. Just because you may have lost your husband. Hallelujah. Doesn't mean that the purpose God had ordained for your life died with him. Hallelujah. No, no. It continues after death because if you are still alive, God is not done with you. You're not finished with your purpose. You're not finished fulfilling your destiny. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you today. Hallelujah. As we look and we celebrate the mothers in the church, even we not only have warrior mothers, but we have warrior widows. Because in 1 Timothy, the Bible tells us that widows are widows indeed when they spend time in prayer. Hallelujah. Over the church and praying over the leaders of the church. Uh, that is a widow indeed. Uh, not somebody who walks around telling tag tales and, and gossiping. Uh, that's left to the younger widows who need to get married again. Hallelujah. The Bible says they need to get married again because they have too much time on their hands. Uh, but the widows who've lost husbands or your, the Bible even specific about an age limit. Uh, hallelujah. 60 and over who've lost husbands uh, are widows indeed who consistently are in prayer. Hallelujah. Praying over the needs of God's people. We have a responsibility ability today to take care of these widows and the orphans. So today, hallelujah, just be reminded that you're not excluded because you lost a husband. Your ministry, your purpose is not finished because he died. It has just been, it's just only just begun. I want to encourage you today. Pray on mothers of Zion. Pray on. The mama and the love that she gave Kneeling by her bedside, I can still hear Mama say, "The people are."